So I'm now going to present the viral diseases of aquaculture. So before we are going to uh, discuss you know, the different viral diseases of aquaculture, let us first define what is a virus. A virus is a microscopic organism that can only reproduce by inhabiting host cells and using its genetic material. It does not carry out independent metabolic functions and it redirects metabolic machinery of the host cell to produce more viral DNA or RNA components. So how are we going to control viruses? So viral diseases are considered to be difficult to treat. In aquaculture, we can use vaccination as a means to control virus, viral diseases. So we are going to use, uh, we are going to apply, for example, vaccination using dead or attenuated viruses to elicit immune response. And it is also important to avoid the carrier brood stock. These are the major viral diseases of fish. Number one is the channel catfish virus or the CCVD. We also have the infectious hematopoietic necrosis or the IHN. We also have the viral hemorrhagic septicemia or the VHS and the infectious pancreatic necrosis or the IPN. So let's, let us first start with the channel catfish virus disease or the CCVD. So what is CCVD? CCVD is caused by an herpes virus, particularly the ectalurid herpes virus 1. It is known to affect the blue and the channel catfish. It mainly occurs in fish that are less than one year old, particularly the fry in fingerlings, or smaller than 15 cm in length. So in this diagram, we have here the channel catfish or the Ectaluris punctatus and the blue catfish or the Ectaluris porcatus. So these are the major hosts of the CCVD or the channel catfish virus disease. So when and where CCVD occurs? So it is thought to mainly spread vertically from the broodstock to young fish via the egg. So that is vertical transmission. Another is horizontal transmission. So this occurs directly from the virus that is shed in the water and from the virus that is carried by animal vectors. CCVD is strongly influenced by environmental stressors. Mortality rates are highest where water temperature exceeds 27 degrees centigrade but decreases with temperature and ceases at 18 degrees centigrade. So what are the signs of the channel catfish virus disease? So an important consideration for the CCVD is that the animals with disease may show one or more of the signs that we are going to discuss later, but the disease may still be present in, in the absence of any disease. So the disease signs at the farm level include high mortality in fry and juvenile catfish. Another is the disease signs at the tank and the pond level includes high mortality that reaches up to 95%. For the clinical signs of the disease in an infected animal, so this includes ascites, which is due to the accumulation of fluid, exothalmos or the popping of the eye, and hemorrhaging of the fins. So in this diagram, now we have here uh, a fish now that is infected with uh, CCVD, uh, showing the hemorrhaging of the ventral abdomen as well as the fins. We also have here a CCVD affected channel catfish fingerling so note here, now the swollen stomach and the pop eye that exhibits the clinical signs of the channel catfish virus disease. For the presence of CCVD in the Asia Pacific, so it is considered to be an exotic disease, meaning that it has not been officially reported in the Asia Pacific region under the NACA FAO OIE. 
So the NACA stands for the Network of Aquaculture Center in the Asia Pacific. So according to this, to, to the report now of the NACA FAO OIE, the disease has not been reported you know, in the in this uh, Asia Pacific region. So what are the treatments for CCVD? So there is no effective treatment for CCVD since this, this is a viral disease. Transmission can be limited by less feeding. Also by improving the water quality and reducing temperature to less than 19 degrees centigrade. And also no reduction of stress on the fish. For the control and prevention of the CCVD, so this includes avoidance. Uh, avoidance of the feral fish, quarantine new fish as well as the survivors, and do not use survivors as broodstock. Containment is also important, so that it is important to sanitize and disinfect with bleach and dechlorinated water. Another is stress reduction, and this includes the optimal, you know, the optimal water quality including high dissolved oxygen levels, avoiding crowding, and low circulation environment. Good nutrition is also important to reduce stress. Another major viral disease of fish in aquaculture is the IHN or the infectious hematopoietic necrosis. So this uh, presentation or the slides that are used in this uh, chapter on infectious hematopoietic necrosis was taken from the report by Abhijit Pramanik of India. So IHN or the infectious hematopoietic necrosis is a viral disease affecting most species of the salmonid fish that is reared in fresh water or sea water. It was first recognized in the 1950s in sockeye salmon and chinook salmon. The virus was introduced to Japan in the year 1968 by eggs from Alaska. The virus spread across North America in the 1970s in rainbow trout and apparently originating from fry or egg shipment from a single source. So the IHN is considered to be an, uh, listed as an OIE notifiable disease. It is considered to be endemic in the Salmonid or the Oncorinco species in the Pacific and Northwest Alaska. It has also been reported in parts of Europe and Asia. And most episodics have been attributed to the importation of the infected eggs or fry. So when we say uh, epizootic, you now that is a disease that is similar or that, that is a counterpart of epidemic in humans. So most of the incidents of the IHN or the infectious hematopoietic necrosis has been attributed to the importation of the infected eggs or fry. So this is the geographical distribution of the cases reported, reporting IHN virus. So IHNV is commonly found in the Pacific coast of Canada and the US and has also been found in Europe and Japan. So these are the list of uh, countries that have reportedly had IHNV infection. So we also have here a diagram showing the countries that have officially reported IHN. Now particularly, you know, it was reported in China, Iran, Japan, and Korea. So the causative agent of IHN is a rhabdovirus of the genus Novi rhabdovirus, also known as the IHNV. So this virus is bullet shaped RNA virus. It can be isolated from spawning fish, pyloric seca, and the stain in the ovarian or the seminal fluid. So we have here an electron micrograph of the IHN virus showing the rod-like particles. 
These are the susceptible hosts for the IHN. So this includes the rainbow trout, coho salmon, sockeye salmon, chum salmon, chinook salmon, pink salmon, masu and the Atlantic salmon. So what are the susceptible stages of the host? So IHN occurs among several species of the salmonids, with fry being the most highly susceptible stage. The older fish are typically more resistant to clinical disease, but among individuals, there is a high degree of variation in the susceptibility. Survivors of IHN demonstrate a strong protective immunity and the synthesis of circulating antibodies to the virus. So what are the target organs and the infected tissues? So the virus entry is, occurs through the gills, at the base of the fins, while the kidney, spleen, and other internal organs are the infectious sites. For fishes with a body length of 4 cm to 6 cm, the kidney should be taken for diagnosis, while for fishes uh, less than 4 cm long, now this should be minced with sterile scissors or scalpel when doing the specimen collection. For the survival outside the host, so the virus is considered to be heat, acid, and either uh, ether labile. The virus will survive in fresh water for at least one month at cooler temperatures, especially if organic material is present. For the stability of the agent, it is readily inactivated by common disinfectants as well as drying. For the reservoir of IHNV, this includes the clinically infected fish and the covert or the asymptomatic carriers among cultured, feral, or wild fish. The virus is shed by the urine, sexual fluid, and from external mucus, whereas kidney, spleen, and other internal organs are the sites in which the virus is most abundant during the course of the overt infection. For the transmission of the disease, so most of the cases of transmission are horizontal, and this includes the infected juveniles, shedding the virus particles in the feces, sexual fluids, and the external mucus. We also have a vertical transmission and that is through the eggs. So for those fish that survive an outbreak, some fish become covert carriers of the virus, providing a reservoir of infection. Insects, annelids, and crustaceans may also act as viral vectors. For the morbidity and mortality you know, due to the IHN, so it is high in fry that reaches up to 90 to 95%, and this is not significant in market size fish. For the disease pattern, infection with IHNV often leads to mortality due to impairment of the osmotic balance and occurs within a clinical context of edema and hemorrhage. The virus multiplication in endothelial cells of the blood capillaries, hematopoietic tissues, and cells of the kidney underlies the clinical signs. For the samples or the tissues that are not suitable, so IHNV is considered to be very sensitive to degradation. Sampling tissues with high enzymatic activities or large numbers of contaminating bacteria such as the intestine or the skin should be avoided when possible. The muscle tissue is also less useful as it typically contains a lower virus load. So in here, in this diagram, you have the GIT or the gastrointestinal tract of the Atlantic Salmon and the GIT is considered to be a not suitable tissue for uh, samples no, for virus detection. For the clinical signs, the disease is typically characterized by gross signs including lethargy, abnormal activity, darkening of the skin. We also have the pale gills, distended abdomen, and exophthalmia. For the internal observation, the fish appears anemic, 
There is also a lack of food in the gut. The liver, the kidney, and the spleen are pale. We also have the presence of an acidic fluid and petechiae are observed in the organs of the body cavity. So the liver, the spleen, and the kidney is swollen with a milky white fluid. The salmon infected or affected by IHN virus exhibit peritoneal and secal fat hemorrhage. We also have here the Chinook salmon fry with IHN virus. So there is darkening from the tail region. There is also the swollen stomach and hemorrhaging at the base of the fins. These are the examples of clinical signs observed in IHNV-infected rainbow trout. So there is an absence of muscular petechiae in trout. There is also the presence of catarr or mucus in the anterior intestine, but normal spleen in the trout. There is also the splenomegaly in the trout. In sockeye salmon, 5% or more of the surviving fish may have spinal deformities. There is also a trailing fecal cast observed in some tests. We also have here you know, the gross signs that are seen in uh, the salmons, uh, the, the sockeye salmon fry that is infected with IHN. So there is an exaggerated cephalic bump for the sockeye salmon fry that commonly occur with IHN disease. There is also the hemorrhaging of the fins at the base no, of the fins. This is sometimes observed in IHN disease. We also have the scoliosis in sockeye salmon, a small surviving the IHN. For the histopathology, we have the necrotic macrophages or kidney cells, necrobiotic bodies you know, in the arrows with debris in the peripheral blood. So we also have here you know, the clinical signs of IHN in rainbow trout on Corinchus micis that was uh, infected with uh, IHN. So the eye here represents the uh, fish that was infected with the wild type of the IHN virus. The C here refers to the control. So for the, the clinical signs that was observed in the infected fish, so this includes the distended visceral cavity. So we have here a visceral cavity that is distended and the presence of petechial hemorrhages at the base of the fins and as well as in the abdomen. We also have here the presence of exophthalmia. It's also observed in the fish that was infected with IHN virus. So for the control, uninfected fish and the fish treated with the recombinant viruses, so they did not show any clinical signs. For the clinical pathology, the IHN virus causes changes in the cellular and the chemical blood constituents, primarily because of renal damage. For the most diagnostic change include the presence of remnants of necrotic cells or necrobiotic bodies as shown here, probably erythrocytes in kidney smears. We also have here the histological analysis of the rainbow trout experimentally infected with IHN virus. So this diagram here represents a normal liver versus an IHNV infected liver. So the liver cells are shown hem are hemorrhaged and necrosed. The cell's nucleus is prominent. The chromatin is also condensed. The liver cytoplasm exhibit extensive vacuole formation. For the prevention and control of the IHN virus, so this includes a good hygiene and the use of virus-free water supplies. So this is important because the virus can be transmitted through water and through contaminated waste materials, particularly in those areas where IHN is considered to be endemic. We also have here uh, vaccination. So there is an available 
a DNA vaccine which has been registered in Canada and it can also be used in the salmon industry. So the egg associated transmission is reduced by surface disinfection of the eggs with a UD4 solution. For the prognosis of the host infected with IHN, so there is a poor prognosis for infected fish. Survivors of epizootics and subclinical infections become lifelong carriers of the virus, and there is no known therapy for fish that have been infected with IHNV. For the human health significance, so there are no human health concerns associated with the virus.